spin your passion into a business with Shopify and break sales records with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records. Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to start with something interesting. So how about a little PC history? In June of 1977, 45 years ago, can you believe that? Apple computer shipped its Apple II. Now, get this. It cost $1,298 45 years ago. It came with, oh, wow, get this 4K of RAM. Yes, upgradable to 48. It had sound. It had color graphics. That's why everybody was really loving it. It also had the basic programming language built in. And it sold really well in schools and in some businesses because it had a spreadsheet program. Anybody have the name of the spreadsheet program? You're going to have to get bonus points if you do. VisiCalc. That's right. It was a VisiCalc. Um, but that wasn't the oldest Apple computer. That was not the oldest. Okay, see if you can go back in time. The oldest computer can be traced back to Adam and Eve. That's right. It was an Apple Genesis. It had limited memory, just one byte, and then everything just crashed, just crashed. All right. You see, on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to America's largest show about all things digital. You can find us on over 420 top stations throughout the United States. And, of course, we're streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for My Last Name Commando, of course. And then you can find us streaming as a podcast, as a webcast, commercial-free, whenever you want. You get three months of archives over at GetKim.com. Because, after all, it's called The Kim Commando Show because, guess what? I'm America's digital pro. Kim Commando here with you once again. And a special thank you and salute goes out to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio. More than 375,000 American servicemen and women in 175 countries and 200 ships at sea. I love that. Get the Kim Commando Show. And I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at 1-888-825-5254 is the way to join us. All right, so I scour the news wires. I go to all these different websites, and I speak to my buddies, industry insiders, every single day to bring you up to date with the top five things that you need to know about tech. And in this part of the show, I like to focus on tech news and what's happening in our world right now. And let me ask you a question. Where are the most computer chips made in our computers, our phones, our speakers, our cars, planes, toasters. Yes, there's a chip in your toaster as long as there's a bagel setting. There's a little fun fact for you. And everything else in modern life. You could say that chips are, well, the new toilet paper, right? Now, some of these chips are made in China, but most are made over in Taiwan. That's right. More than two-thirds of the semiconductors are built there. And the U.S. currently makes how many? Zero percent. That's right, zero percent. Well, signed this past week is the Chips and Science Act with bipartisan support. It's going to invest $50 billion so we can have a semiconductor industry here in the United States able to support all the chips that we could ever need. Now, about $10 billion is going towards building semiconductors for cars, communications, tech, medical devices, and defense. $11 billion is going to go into research and development. Now, the agency plans to start accepting applications by early February, releasing funds by the spring. This is actually great news, but unfortunately, we are just mm, terribly late to this dance. Uh, number two on our list of five things is companies are finally wising up to Facebook. And I'm sure that you've seen it. You go to log into a website, you want to buy something. They say you can create an account by filling out all these forms, or you can just check this box to sign in with your Google account or check this box to sign in with your Facebook account. Well, some big brands have removed the option to sign in and use your Facebook account credentials because of what? Yes, privacy concerns, data sharing policies that no one really knows. Those brands include Best Buy, Ford, Pottery Barn, Dell, Nike, and others. Now, this is a reminder of something that I've stressed to you for so many years, that you don't want to use your Facebook credentials to sign into anything because you're only giving up more data to who knows who, right? And it looks like Facebook's revenues are going to be declining, they say, yes, for another quarter. 
Uh, it could have happened to a nicer company, right? I mean, let me just tell you, people are throwing a new term around on the internet and in conversation. Listen to this. When someone reads your email on your laptop or they pick up your phone and they start scanning your text messages, basically doing something in real life that is violating your privacy, what you now have to do is you call them out and you say, would you just stop being a Zuckerberg already? Yes, a new word for your lexicon. Uh, number three on our list of five things to be careful if you own these cars, it's a social media challenge. I read this really interesting story over at the Wall Street Journal site the other day. And there are viral videos, of course, that are showing people how to steal cars on TikTok and YouTube. And usually at the end of these videos, there's a challenge to steal these cars or make a song about how fun it was to steal this car and go joyriding. Now, in some communities throughout the United States, the police department are getting involved because there are two specific car makes that these guys and gals are going after. Uh, in Milwaukee, the police department is encouraging you to put a sticker on your car, if you have one of these cars, that gives the police permission to pull the car over if it's being driven between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. because that's the time that most often these cars are stolen. So what are the two car brands being stolen and are being in these challenge videos? Well, it's a surge of Kia and Hyundai's. That's right. And they're not being stolen to make money. The Kia are models between 2011 and 2021. The Hondas between 2016 and 2021. Now, the problem is that these cars, they don't have all that advanced tech that will prevent, run, will prevent someone from stealing that car if they don't have the key. Now, newer models have something called number immobilizers, and it matches to a key with a chip and makes it actually harder for them to steal. So if you have a Kia or you have a Hyundai, make sure that you keep it locked up and parked in the same spot. And if you know someone who does, make sure that you share this news with them, because if someone steals your Kia, you'll have no Kia. Hmm, that was a good one. All right, number four on our list, when tech dies. When you buy a new laptop, earphones, or an ebook reader, have you ever wondered how long will this device last? Well, the manufacturers know when each gizmo is actually going to die, and so should you. So if you buy a brand new Amazon Fire HD8 tablet, let me tell you, it was never designed to be repaired. When the lithium ion batteries will no longer hold the charge, guess what? It just dies, and that will be in about three years. Uh, the same for Apple AirPods. They die in about two years. The Bose QC35 noise-canceling headphones will die in five years. Sony's over-the-ears WH-1000 noise-canceling headphones, they will die in four to five years. Your Fitbit's going to be gone. Hasta la vista in four years. The Nintendo Switch in three years. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? Uh, the iPhone, Tesla's laptops, the iPad, they were designed for repairs. So before you spend hundreds, what you want to do is just look at the repair policy and the life policy. And we can thank the Washington Post for doing all the lead work on that. Oh, by the way, if you have a first-generation Eero mesh router, debuted in 2016, it was discontinued in 2017, it's going to stop repair, it's going to be stop receiving guaranteed software security updates after September 30th this year. So that too will be DOA. And finally, this, debtors, they've come out of the woodwork. I didn't say debtors, I said debtors. See, when someone dies, Wikipedia editors, they just race to change the page of the person who's deceased. And the people who do this on Wikipedia, because, you know, anybody can edit anything, they have a phrase that they call themselves. They call themselves debtors. I saw this over at Gizmodo. A woman by the name of Annie Renda, she's the creator of a Twitter account called Depths of Wikipedia. Well, she took some time out this past week to explain what was happening on Queen Elizabeth's Wikipedia page behind the scenes on the day of her death. Now, the work is done by, by free for free by countless editors on Wikipedia, and they started having this big debate. I mean, what picture should we use of Queen Elizabeth as the profile picture? Uh, what should we say? And what are we going to call Charles? And what is his name? What picture should we use for them? And Rwanda says that once someone dies, Wikipedia generally uses a good historical pic instead of a recent elderly picture. So they didn't limit their work to the Wikipedia page. Apparently, there's this task force called Wikipedia London Project, and they started creating new articles calling it the death of Elizabeth II, reactions to the death of Elizabeth II. So in case you're wondering what was going on in Wikipedia, now you know. 
tell you, Queen Elizabeth, she was a class act, wasn't she? I mean, gosh, I'm still amazed that she was working two days before her death. And at her age, I mean, talk about a life of service to people. And I want to just share this letter that I received from my listener mail. A gentleman by the name of Ken Knapp. Hello, Ken. Thank you for your email. Uh, in Leola, Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you, I, I do read every single email. And this one just, it touched my heart that I want to share it with you. Uh, he says, hi, Kim. I just want to say I love listening to you for many years and just rediscovered you on your podcast. Yes, thank you. He says, I'm really excited. I spent 26 years in the military with my family, and we moved 18 times. And hearing you on the radio with your short tech minutes was a constant I could find almost anywhere in the world, including Armed Forces Radio in Europe and the Middle East. Oh, thank you for that, Ken. Yes, every single day there's a daily tech update and digital life hack. Uh, Ken continues, now that I'm retired, I spend less time driving and listening to the radio, searching for news to listen. And then I saw an article in the recent AARP magazine. Yes, I was the cover child on AARP uh, with Abby, of course. And you can see that picture in case you didn't look at it. I have it posted over on my Instagram page. Uh, anyway, I found your podcast. I was searching for news, as he says. Uh, you're the best. I appreciate your straightforward analysis of old and new tech. You dumb it down so even regular guys like me can understand it. Oh, you're so smart, Ken. I, don't dumb it down. Uh, finding your podcast after not listening to you for too long a time is like finding an old friend. Your voice is a treasure. Uh, thanks for continuing to do what you do, and thanks to your team, a renewed, faithful listener. Very respectfully, Ken. Ken, thank you so much for your email. It, uh, it, really, it really made my day, and I really appreciate you writing in. I'm just honored and humbled by your note, and I get to do what I love every single day. And thank you for letting me be a part of your life because you're a blessing to me. All right, coming up in this area, sneaky ways to read a message without the other person knowing. Hoo-hoo. We have free dictation tools to tell you about. Uh, some username mistakes that you're making that may be putting you at risk online. We've got Siri tricks that you're going to use. And if somebody accidentally sends you money, mm, you could, in fact, be getting scammed. And, of course, we have me and, of course, all of our great phone calls here on The Kim Commando Show. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't. And that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users, and it has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open. Love to hear from you at one 825 And if you're just, well, too shy to call a national radio show and podcast with, I don't know, tens of millions of people listening, I totally get that. You can drop me your question on the website. Head over to commando.com with a K, of course. And on the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim. And that's where that magic happens. All right. How about we start with Glenn in Detroit, Michigan. Hi there, Glenn. Hi. Glenn? Oh. Hi, Glenn. Yes. How can I help you out? What's going Hi. on? Uh, I have an iPhone 10 that I uh, took swimming. And I was looking to get some data recovery. And when I went to the Apple store, they said, well, we don't do anything like that. They recommended a couple companies. Um, that is very, very expensive. <laughs> Start what like kind of prices were you saying? $800 on up to 4000 Yeah, that's that's how much the going rate is. It, uh, uh, I said, get oh, a phone I'm back. not a business. <laughs> Oh, no, I understand that. I understand that. But, yeah. but they have these computer forensic labs that they use. 
uh, where yep. it's white coats and they they have to take the whole phone apart. They got to figure out how to get the drive out if they can, and they got to get the data off of the off of the phone, and then they have to put it in a format for you. So it's it's a process. This isn't something where you can just give it to somebody and they're going to hand you're going to hand it to them and they're going to say, oh. Let me put my magic wand on this, and I will get all of Glenn's data back. <laughs> so, you know that that's pretty much the going rate. Right. There's I don't know if they referred you to uh, to OnTrack is the name of a good company. Uh, they've been around for many many years, and then there's also uh, uh, Drive Savers Data Recovery. Uh, that's another yeah, one. Yeah, that was one of them. Yeah, and and these are big companies. These are, these are outfits. So you can see, uh, you know, when you go to their website, everything that they put into it. And they normally give you a free evaluation, though, first. And so you could send them the phone. And if they can do anything with it, you pay. And if they can't, they're going to be honest with you and say, listen, there's just nothing that we could do. So the, the rule of thumb now, Glenn, is what? <laughs> Have a backup? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Have a backup. Have backups. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you know it's you know what you're not alone. I mean, I, I mean, I you know I dropped my phone in the pool the other day. I did, and but I had it didn't actually stay in there a long time. The the I was chasing after the dog and I was trying to take a picture and she jumped up on me and then suddenly the, the you hear that oh splash I'm like oh gosh and then I was fully dressed but I ran into the jumped in the pool to get my phone back. And but I have something on my phone that if you don't already have it, it's something that you definitely want to uh, to do. There's a water eject shortcut, and so on your phone you open the shortcuts gallery, uh, and you go to shortcutsgallery.com as a matter of fact, and then search for the water eject shortcut. Then you add the shortcut to your phone. Now, if you ever drop your phone in water, you open the shortcuts app, and then you tap water eject. And then this bassy tone is going to play for roughly 15 seconds. And at the end, this pop-up message alerts you that the water has been expelled from the phone speaker. Uh, that website, again, to download Water Eject is shortcutsgallery.com. Once again, that's shortcutsgallery.com. Sorry, Glenn. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. But if you need help setting up that backup from now on over in iCloud, we've got all, all kinds of steps over on the website at commando.com. All right, so you received a text message, and for whatever the reason, you don't want the person who sent the message to know that you've actually read it. So how do you do that? The first option is to enable notifications on your phone. This way, when a message comes in, you're going to see the entire message on your phone's home screen or just enough to know what it's about without actually opening it. Another trick is that when you see that a text has arrived, but you don't want the person to know that you read it, immediately put your phone into airplane mode and turn off Wi-Fi. This totally cuts off the internet from your phone. You can still look at it, but there's no way for that read receipt to be sent. And whatever messaging app that you're using, just make sure the option for read receipts is totally off. Hey, stay right where you are. We have more of the show, more phone calls coming up. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't, and that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel, and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Hey, coming up in just a few moments, we're going to talk about username mistakes that could be putting your identity at risk. Uh, we have some Siri tricks that you're going to love. And also, if someone accidentally sends you money, you'll be like, woohoo, happy day. Uh, it could just be a scam. All right, this is a fabulous tip. It's something that I use, well, every single day. And whether you just are tired of typing an email and text message or you want to write the next great American novel, 
you don't need to buy any separate software or an app to dictate your words and then turn that into typed text because you already have it. Now, it does take a little bit of time to set it up on your Windows or Mac to get used to your voice. Not very much. Uh, and you, knew, you do need to speak clearly and use a mic on your earbuds. That seems to work best. And if you want to include punctuation, you have to say something like, I love the Kim Commando Show, exclamation mark, end. Uh, now, to use the free dictation software on Windows, simple. Just on Windows, just press the Windows key and the letter H. And on a Mac, it's under System Preferences, Keyboard, and Dictation. Or just hit that. Let me see what would be that. That would, You want to hit the, uh, the Control key twice on your Mac, and that should pop it up. And, you know, this is interesting. One of the first online hookup apps started out by using Sean Connery to do voiceovers. I don't know if you know this. Um, but they noticed. It was really strange. They were just getting a lot of hits from roofers. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I mean, we have Sean Connery and roofers. Apparently... All these roofers were interested in the dozens of the hot shingles, yes, the shingles, in their area. Okay, that's it? Yes. Okay, work. just work with me a little bit on it. All right, back to the phones we go with Kendra in Moscow, Idaho. Hello there, Kendra. Hi, Kim. Thanks for taking my question. Oh, my pleasure. How can I help you out? What's going on? So um, I love your show, listen to it a lot in the car, and um, so I had this idea, why don't I just ask for her advice on this problem I'm having? So I teach a morning class, and the Wi-Fi is horrible, and I like to use a lot of technology when I teach the class app and pull anywhere, but they kick the kids off usually that don't have data. So I'm looking for something that I can extend the Wi-Fi um, we're in a church, so it's the router is somewhere where I don't know and I can't access it. <laughs> um, we don't know where it is. So it's in the sanctuary, I, need, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's somewhere. So I just want something that will, you know, we're down in the, the south of the building, and so it's very weak, but I just need something to boost it a little bit so I can have my 20 students get on the Internet at the same time. Wow. Uh, you've got a lot of things going against you. Um, especially because the, if you like where you said like you're down in the basement, is that what you just said? Not in the basement, but south of the building. I think the router oh, is okay. in the middle of the building. Which so would where be great. we are, it's very, very weak. Okay. Um, all right. You can buy a Wi-Fi extender and you can try it and you can just plug it in and see if that works. Um, what kind of computer do you have? Well, I have I have a pretty old laptop, but my husband just bought a new one today, yesterday and surprised me. So I don't know what it is now, but I'm running Windows 10 on this older laptop. And I okay, don't have any problems getting on the Internet or using the other oh, stuff, okay. but it's just that. When all the kids okay. get on, then everybody then starts you, getting knocked well, off. Well, exactly. Um, I'll tell you what. There are several Wi-Fi extenders, uh, and they, they're priced anywhere from $25 to $45. And we have a list of ones that we recommend over on the website. But why don't I do this? How about if I – let me send you one, okay? Because you're a teacher, and you shouldn't have okay. to buy all this stuff for the kids. So I'm going to send you a Wi-Fi extender so um, that I think will work. And for everybody else, if you are wondering about which is the best Wi-Fi extender, just search the website for best Wi-Fi extender. We've got three or four listed there. Anything from if the room is how, – how big is the room, by the way, Kendra? The um, it's, room. I, it's not that big. Like um, we have – Six tables in there. Okay, all right. So uh, I, I'm not really good with dimensions, but it's probably okay, twenty a, by twenty, maybe. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's that's good. That's good enough. I just I wanted to make sure it wasn't like this big. You you, you took up half oh, the no, building. No, no, it's not <laughs> These big. kids yeah. or like that. Okay, because no. no, that no, no. that's that's really dependent upon which Wi-Fi extender that you may need. But like there are companies like Linksys makes them, Netgear as well as TP-Link. I like TP-Link because it's cheap and they normally work out pretty well. So uh, I'm going to send you a Wi-Fi extender. So Kendra, hang on the line. Uh, 
And uh, okay. we're going to make sure that we have your address and all that good stuff that we need so that I can send that out to you. And this is just another, what I like to call our, our random acts of kindness that we do here on the show from time to time. So, Kendra, uh, thanks for your call. Thanks for listening. And uh, this Wi-Fi extender, we're going to send that out to you probably on Monday. So you'll get it within a few couple. You'll get it within a few days, of course. And thank you again for your call. It's time now for our digital privacy tip of the week. And this week it's brought to you by Total AV. With, all right. So have you ever thought about what you might be giving up with your usernames? I mean, what what actually are you saying about yourself? How much are you really telling people in the world about yourself? So like, for example, let's say your username is Joe Doctor 1265 Okay. Well, is Joe might be your first name. Okay. Uh, you're a doctor. You were born on January 2nd, 1965, you were born in December of 1965. So there's a lot of personally identifiable details about that with your username. What you want to do is use, use have usernames that are more mundane. Now, some people also will connect their username to a password. So let's say your username is Twinkle Twinkle, and then you make your password little star. Mm, okay, see how easy that is. Uh, you can use Beatles Forever or Beachy Keen, and then that was, those don't really say anything about anybody other than you're just a Beatles fan. Uh, another problem might be is if you don't change the default username. Now, a lot of devices, including your Wi-Fi router, that they have a username that's already baked in called admin. And then if you go to any of these router password sharing sites, somebody knows your password because it's all out there for the taking. So if you still have an admin on your router or on your firewall or anything like that, make sure that you change that, that username. And stop reusing usernames too. A uh, password manager will help you out. And if you do have some usernames that you're like, oh gosh, Kim, you're totally right. I didn't even think about that. We have the steps over at the website at Cometo.com on how to change your username. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. All right, still to come, we've got some Siri tricks that you're going to use all the time. And if somebody s accidentally sends you money, it's not because it's your lucky day. You could be getting scammed. I'm going to tell you more about that. And we have more of your fantastic phone calls here on the Kim Commando Show. How'd you like to hear about how I saved $456 in just five minutes? I used an app called Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Can you remember all the free trials and all the other random subscriptions that you've signed up for? Of course you don't. And that's what they're banking on. I love that with Rocket Money, I can see all of my subscriptions in one place. Then if I see something I don't want, I just tap to cancel and I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things that you just don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash Kim. That's rocketmoney.com slash Kim. Rocketmoney.com slash Kim. All right. I love free things, and I know you do too, but why haven't you gotten our free guides? Head over to commando.com slash free guides, and then there you'll see some download links for a Windows free guide or your Mac free guide. You can get both too if you want. And this is where we're taking you beyond the basics. So you can learn how to get text right on your computer. Uh, we can give you some quick photo editing secrets without downloading any programs. We've got some keyboard shortcuts, some search tricks, some map tricks, all kinds of great things like that. Plus, there's a list of totally free and malware-free, and you don't have to worry about it, downloads for both Windows and Mac. So head over to commando.com slash free guides. That's commando.com slash free guides. And once you're there, uh, just give us your email address. We're not going to sell, lease, distribute your email address to anybody ever. You can always, always trust us. And then you get those free guides. All right. I'm not going to say the S-I-R-I -I word because then everybody's devices will totally turn on them as you're listening. But the first thing I want you to do is make sure that you have the hey S word 
signed in, turned on in your iPhone settings. And so this way you can do so much with only your voice. Now, let's say you've parked at the airport, a big sports arena, or maybe you're just in a new part of the country, a new area. So rather than taking a photo of where you parked, all you have to do is say the S word and then remember where I parked. And then a pin is gonna drop right on a map so you know exactly where your car is located. Uh, the next trick is if you hear a song and you don't know who's saying you're the name of the tune, you can just say, hey, the S word, what song's playing. And my favorite one, which I've passed along so many times to you, but just in case you're new, is that you can say, hey, the S word, turn on the flashlight and turn off the flashlight, which is especially handy when you lose the phone and you know it's somewhere in the dark and then you're like, whoa, there's my phone there, right where it is. All right, back to the calls we go with Owen in Fairway, Kansas. Hi, Owen. How are you? Kim, doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. So what's on your mind today? Uh, my wife and I enjoy listening to your show here in the Kansas City area. We're getting ready to make a change from our current cable provider to Google Fiber. Yes. And I wanted to run, run by you what we're going to do and get your opinion about it. Sure. So we're going to run Google Fiber into the house. And then from there, we're going to use the existing uh, cabling within our home uh, for the TVs. And the coax we'll cable. use coax cable. Yep. But so there's a bit of a twist here. Uh, on the back end of each of the TVs, we're going to use Roku devices because we're going to move to streaming. But we're going okay. to use also Mocha devices, a multimedia over coax, over coax, yes. Which essentially, we're told, gives the equivalent of, if not exactly, but very close to Ethernet speeds. Um, and what this is allowing us to do is to avoid having to pull new cable in our home um, to take advantage of, of Google Fiber. And uh, right. we've read a lot about it. And I know you know this. It's technology that's been around since the mid 2000s. And um, you know, a couple other questions, but I guess right off the Right off the bat, what do you think of using these Mocha devices uh, um, with the coax cable to essentially take advantage of the high-speed Google Fiber coming into the home? Yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting technology. It doesn't get a lot of, no pun intended, airplay, right? Um, because everybody is so getting really so into ethernet and ethernet is faster but the big upside to mocha is as you, you so astutely stated is that you're not punching holes in walls right and getting uh, right. trying to string right. some some cat cables through the whole place in order to get the, the dedicated line of course you're going to get a uh, really darn good service um the the big thing is to a couple of things is that you want to make sure that you know it's compatible with whatever you're trying to use it, which it probably is. Uh, and you know, there's nothing like hard wiring. Um, so make sure that whatever router device that you're using, and I'm certain that's going to be a mesh network at this point, right? Uh, because then you'll get this fast Wi-Fi throughout the entire house. And if you're, uh, you know, if you're looking for some mesh networking. Uh, Google sells it, that, so sells a package, I believe, along with the fiber and Mocha that you might want to just tap into because then it's kind of sold as a set, so to speak, and this way you know that everything's all compatible and it works. Yes. We, um, we're going to do exactly as you described for the Wi-Fi network, um, bolting Mocha devices um, for the Wi-Fi routers, and we're also sure. going to attach Mochas directly to the TVs so that they, oh. the TVs enjoy the high speed as well. So we'll get In, what we hope. But with what we're thinking is we're going to not put as much of a burden on the Wi-Fi network. Oh, by absolutely. Essentially, yeah. So I you know, wanted your opinion of kind of doing both. You know, we're going to certainly have Wi-Fi in the home uh, routers, but then slap these Mocha devices on each of the back of the TVs. I, you know what? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a great solution, Owen. I really do. I think it's, I, it's really Thanks. smart. I, and obviously, you've done a lot of homework. Um, can you do me a huge favor? Uh, is sure. that when when you get it all set up and everything's all working, could you call me back and let me know what didn't work and some downsides? Sure. Um, yeah, because anytime absolutely. you anytime you anytime you read about like Google Fiber and Mocha, everybody's, oh, it's so fabulous, and we have some new versions of Mocha coming out, and you're going to love them even more than everybody loves it now. Uh, 
I, you know, I, I, as I think you may have heard on the show, is that I am uh, building a house, and with that, it's uh, we've got five miles of Cat Six cables <laughs> throughout the entire wow. house, uh, five wow. miles, which is just crazy, just wow. crazy. Yes. Um, yes. So, Owen, you're going to give me a call back after you know how it works. Owen, thanks again for your call. Jim, you're up next from Gilbert, Arizona. Hi there, Jim. Hi, Kim. Thank you very much for taking my call. You I, uh, I, I heard just the end of your last call, and I have to comment. Uh, I have no idea what mocha is, but it sounds like something you drink. So <laughs> I, I, uh, <laughs> it sounded like you gave uh, Owen a lot of help, though. That, that was great. <laughs> Um, my question, I think, is simple, but um, I live in a house in, uh, that is a virtual library. I have about 3,000 books that I have uh, collected over the years, and I would like to organize them into a searchable catalog. And I wondered if you could recommend some sort of software that I could use to uh, input the title and the author, and if, if possible, even the location. With I've got bookcases in various locations in the house. Um, I don't. That's not critical. But I'd I'd love to have be able to to search the database and confirm whether I have a particular book, and then sure. and I'll have an idea where to look for it. Do you have any suggestions well, about that? Yeah, I have, a, I have a few. One one is called Library Thing. I think you'll like Library Thing. Um, cause it is a, it works off your desktop, but it also has an app so you can take pictures of the books. And when you do that, uh, you don't have to manually enter in the ISBN oh, numbers great. and then terrific. it pulls, it, it pulls data from 2200 libraries and also okay. the library of Congress. So you get full information, even the book's physical height and weight, which is pretty fabulous. Uh, hmm. another one isn't as extensive. It's called LibLib. Uh, Libib, I'm sorry, L-I-B-I-B, Libib, uh, say that 12 times. Um, and But I think, why don't you try library things? I'm almost positive that's going to be the best one for you. And for some reason, if you don't like it, just give me a call back and we'll find a new one. Jim, thank you so much for your call. We have more of the show coming up. Okay, so let, let's imagine that this happens to you. You look down at your phone and goes, hey, you just got $500 from Venmo. You're like, oh my gosh, isn't that amazing? Well, it's not just Venmo, it's Cash App and Zelle, too. So people are accidentally sending money to hundreds and thousands of people. And then what happens is, is that you try to send the money back. It's going to come from your Venmo balance, and it could actually be funded by your credit card or bank account, too. So just ignore it. Hey, thanks for listening to Kim Commando today. So reach over and give me a nice five-star review. Yes, thank you. And thanks for listening. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she had just launched her new side gig, a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. What did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Spin your passion into a business with Shopify and break sales records with the world's best converting checkout. Let's hear that one more time. The world's best converting checkout. Shopify's legendary checkout makes it easier for customers to shop on your website, across social media, and everywhere in between. Now that's music to your ears. Any way you spin it, you can be a smash hit with Shopify. Start your dollar a month trial today at shopify.com slash records.